There wasn't a defensive player selected until pick 15 of the 2024 NFL Draft. That is not going to be the case next year when we see this vast group of defensive players get into the NFL. Will Mason Graham of Michigan be added to that list to go before pick 15? Let's dive into the tape and find out why I think he absolutely could be among those drafted that high. Listed at 6'3", 320 pounds, Mason Graham is a top-level gap penetrator. He can get into the middle of offensive lines and into the backfield as quick as a blink, and that's what you want from a true three-tech, a guy who projects as that in the next level. You know, he's a bit stockier. He's not really as trim as you'd expect from a three-tech. You think of some of the top-level guys, but when we talk about being a legitimate defensive tackle, you have to have some of that to not get pushed back vertically as often, and Mason Graham fits that profile. The swim move here is beautiful. The timing and all of the nuance that goes into getting into the, the A-gap right here is perfect. So initially, we have this split zone from the offensive line. They are going to their left, but Mason Graham identifies it and cuts back across the grain, gets into the A gap right here, he's going to end up getting in the path of this tight end that's coming across on the split zone field, but watch as he gets in here really quickly. So let's just move back a little bit because I don't want to miss his shoulders like right here. This is perfect with the swim move coming over. His hand comes over quick. His right hand comes down. All of this squeezing into the gap he can get skinny he turns his shoulder sideways to be able to get into that a gap and then he causes just a ton of havoc back here again you have the center now turned around facing this way everyone else is blocking down here trying to get around and then you got the tight end who comes right in here all of this gets jumbled up into the backfield he gets pushed right into the running back and boom it's a tackle for loss great job here from, from mason graham not just getting into the backfield but blowing up this entire play with the quick move and the shoulder there boom it's all one fast movement and he gets there and creates a lot of disruption for the minnesota offense and then we have what i think he does better than he gets a little bit of credit for is his ability to stack for a guy who has shorter arms at least it looks like he's got shorter arms on tape is that he can really do a good job of stacking offensive linemen and then disengaging so right here again gets off really quickly nice lateral movement really good frame work feet under him he's not bent too far forward but he uses this very well he's going to slide to the left a little bit disengage get off there and force this to be instead of it being maybe a five six seven yard carry where he the running back falls forward it's only a two two and a half yard gain and it creates a, a win for the defense essentially to get michigan into an a down where you can start to blitz and get creative with it so he's really versatile he lined up at three tech right here gonna move over to a two and just kind of Again, move to the his left laterally, engage the center, get into the middle here, and instead of continuing on his path, which we like to see from him a lot where he loops around, he stops his momentum and creates problems for the tight end once again, who's trying to lead through, and when he stops his momentum, he kind of the tight end kind of thinks maybe I should block him, but I'm trying to get to the linebacker. So instead of doing that, he creates a gap in between the guard, the center and the tight end where now he ends up coming through here and creating a problem in the backfield or in the, in the line of scrimmage, wherever he ends up being right there. So really nice job from Mason Graham using his quickness and then his ability to stack with shorter arms to create, uh, I wouldn't say more of a neutral play on for the offense right there. This is one of the best battles that I got to watch. He didn't win a ton of them because Donovan Jackson, guard for the Ohio State University here, is one of the best in the entire fo uh, entire college football. If you guys are interested in seeing his breakdown, I did a report on Donovan Jackson for TDN. You can go to thedraftnetwork.com and read his profile there. But this is just a, such a fantastic job of beating him quickly while identifying the pass uh, the, the play action pass here from Ohio State and then creating a sack. So here he's lined up as your your two lined up right on the the, the guard and he's going to go to the outside and into, into the B gap right here. But we have the pass the play action pass here from Ohio State, so he has to make sure he's not overcommitting and creating a gap, a running lane for anybody. So there it is. He sees it, he pulls underneath and rips through and then creates the sack there. So he got, he got the better of Jackson here. This is a really fun matchup. He didn't play a ton 
on him in this game. But what I, again, want to really focus and harp on here is that he's getting to that outside. Here's that outside step so he can locate but keep his leverage to the outside and then use that to get into the B-gap when he's ready. So he stacks perfect, extends his arms, and then pulls Donovan Jackson through and rips underneath, and then he closes. Picture perfect. Exactly how you draw it up. Hand usage, foot speed when he's got that wide base for a guy who's not the best in the phone booth when his feet are together. So all of that being said, there's going to be some drawbacks with, with, with with bigger guys. We, we know that ankle flexion is one of the most important parts of creating positive pass rush angles, being able to just bend your ankle a little bit to create that. And this is where it shows up for Mason Graham is this again, really nice job of timing. This he's going to get into this gap here with quickness, what he does best right there. Another swim move over but this time, instead of being able to put his foot in the ground and then get down right here, it takes a little a little bit longer. It's more of a rounded path, and then he kind of lunges. And that's because, again, he doesn't have that quick-footed ankle flexion ability to really change directions and get down the line. For those cornering on the outside for pass rushers, that ability to really put your foot in the ground and then get down the line is essential to create that rushing angle. So something that he might be able to get better with in time, there's a lot of flexibility work and trainers out there that can help him get just a little bit of maybe release in that ankle to help that out a little bit. But you want to be able to get down that in corner when you put your foot in the ground to be able to create that rushing angle. And we talked a little bit about his arm length for defensive tackles against tackles or anybody else really on the interior that have those really long arms. They can get into his chest and reach block him out of the way. But the bigger problem is going to be at least right now because his handwork is so quick and so fast is that down blocks and he can, he can kind of get washed out of plays with lateral displacement. We talked a little bit about his vertical displacement. He's very good anchor, being able to take double teams that want to go from him to the second level. And he can stay in there and disengage. We kind of saw that a little bit on the earlier Alabama play where he was against the center. And then you have the, the tight end come through. But this is really where he, he needs to get a little bit better. The one thing that I think can really improve this is core strength. So from the offensive perspective, you're going to engage, you're going to engage here and then you get the down block. That initial block from the uh, that initial hit from the tackle, you you withstand that with a little bit of core strength. So right here, you want to be able to withstand that and fight back against that some torque using your core and your abdomen to be able to fight against that and then from there if you do get pushed out anyway it's that lower half body strength to be able to fight against that to get your foot back in the ground to be able to drive against this so sometimes he will get washed out of plays because he's just a little bit he sorry he just needs to improve his core strength and his lower body strength in this department a little bit more because he's already very strong he's got really good legs against that vertical displacement that we've that we've talked about but that lateral movement and ability to really get him out of zone zone gaps and things like that he does need to improve upon so versatility he is an incredibly versatile defensive lineman moved around all over the place for Michigan from four a little bit of five to inside at zero where he's able to use his strength and power He's got really good first step as well, so he can generate speed to power and use that to bully guys. And you don't see it a ton because he loves to – he does prefer to use his <laughs> quickness to be able to get in and out of gaps like here and here, but he just goes straight through the center right here and into the quarterback. And then the effort after is what you really want because Mason Graham can do all of that quickness stuff, but he has the effort to play in, down in and down out, first, second, and third down to consistently – get after the run game and the quarterback to be able to make a true impact. This is on third down, creates a fourth and short. That's what you want to see from your defensive tackles and your defensive players. So all in all, Mason Graham has everything that you really want from a top level three tech going from college to the NFL. A little bit of things he has to work on, but his timing and the nuance that he brings to the position is truly next level. And even something as simple as this, where he doesn't get any credit for anything 
this is all about timing and nuance and the pass rush art that it really has become in the NFL. He moves Michael Penix off of his spot and into more of these pass rushers from Michigan and creates out of thin air an incompletion. Doesn't go on the stat sheet for him, but it does come down where we're, we're, we're going to see it here. A little bit of shoulder shimmy at the top where he's going to come inside right here. So he comes outside first, and he goes to the inside with his shoulder move, and that's going to move this guard to the inside here. So you have your outside foot planted here, and he's going to push off and generate movement to his left. And as soon as he's going to his left, Mason Graham pushes off and extends, comes underneath. Look at the lateral displacement. There, there's so much space here. This is... There's so much space between him and that guard. It's beautiful. It's timed well. And then again, like I said, he moves him into the pressure right here. That ball comes out. It's low, just a little bit, just a little bit low to create an incompletion. So timing, quickness, and nuance as the art of pass rush continues to get even better with time in the NFL. And Mason Graham has all of the raw ability, nuance, natural footwork to be able to be a high-level pass rusher in the NFL. Just tweak some of that, things he's got to improve with ankle flexion, core strength, and a little bit of his lower half. Can't fix your arm strength or your arm length, but you can really help with the hand speed that he has. So I think Mason Graham has the ability to be a top 15 player in this draft. If you guys want to see a different opinion on it, go check out Damian Parsons' breakdown of Mason Graham from earlier in the season on TDN.com. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button right now. Hit the like on the way out. And I hope you guys have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day.